Hello, and welcome to the online demonstration of Fault Tree Plus. Fault Tree Plus is the world's most popular fault tree software package incorporating fault tree analysis, event tree analysis, and Markov analysis. With these three modules, you can analyze the combinations of events that can lead to a hazard, analyze the range of possible outcomes of an initiating event, and model the interdependencies between systems or components. Fault tree diagrams represent the logical relationship between subsystem and component failures and how they combine to cause system failures. The top event of a fault tree represents a system event of interest and is connected by logical gates to component failures known as basic events. After creating the diagram, failure and repair data is assigned to the components. The analysis is then performed to calculate reliability and availability parameters for the system and to identify critical components. Let's take a look at how to use the program Fault Tree Plus. Constructing a fault tree with Fault Tree Plus is very simple and can be accomplished with a few simple mouse clicks. To begin, I'll add a top gate. Once I have my top gate, I can add additional gates or basic events to the tree by selecting the Add Gate or Add Event toolbar buttons and clicking where I want to place them. Gates and events can be edited simply by double-clicking on them. Let's edit a gate now. In the Edit Gate dialog, we can change the name and description of the gate, as well as change the type. The gate type indicates the logic applied to the inputs of that gate, such as AND, OR, or voting logic. Additionally, we can add pagination to a gate, which will force its inputs to appear on a separate page. We can change pages by using the toolbar options or fault tree hierarchy on the left-hand side. In the Edit Event dialog, we can change the name and description. We can also set the logic mode to turn the event into a house event, which is an event that is either true or false. Some of the other options we can set for gates and events include additional notes fields, hyperlinks to web pages or documents, and the color. You can either add probabilistic failure data from the Edit Event dialog, or you can create a generic failure model. Fault Tree Plus offers 14 different failure models to choose from dependent on the type of failure characteristics the event exhibits. For continuously operating components, you'll probably use the rate or MTTF models. This is used for components that exhibit a constant failure rate with an exponential failure distribution. The dormant model is used for components that experience hidden or latent failures. Time at risk model indicates a component whose failure only contributes to top gate occurrence for a particular duration. And the Weibel model allows you to enter characteristic life, shape, and location parameters for components that exhibit a non-constant failure rate. Once you have created a generic failure model, you can apply it to individual basic events by simply dragging and dropping. Often, the biggest difficulty in performing a fault tree analysis is obtaining accurate and reliable data. One may ask where to obtain the data to enter into a failure model. The most accurate data comes from your own gathered empirical observations, for instance, historical times to failure recorded in a failure reporting system. This data represents real-world failure times and can be used in a Weibull program to estimate a mean time to failure. The next most preferable source would be from a library. Many organizations collect failure data from diverse sources and estimate times to failure from statistical analyses of their gathered data. Two of these libraries, the NPRD and IAEA, are integrated into Fault Tree Plus, allowing you to easily create a failure model from this data. Manufacturers will also sometimes certify a mean time to failure for their components, based on their own testing. If this data is available, it can be usefully applied to fault tree analysis. Another source might be from a failure rate prediction standard, such as the MIL Standard 217 or Telcordia SR332. 
which will calculate a failure rate based on the construction and usage characteristics of a component. Lastly, might be simple engineering judgment and experience, although this is the most subjective. Let's move back to Fault Tree Plus. Gates and events can be copied and pasted. This can be useful to duplicate an item without having to duplicate the effort to create it. It can also be used to create common cause failures. If I copy and paste an event, it will make a duplicate of that event elsewhere in the tree. Note that their names are the same, indicating they're the same common cause event. This can be used to model a case where the failure of one component can affect two otherwise independent systems. If I copy and paste special, a new event is created with the same properties. This is used to reduce data entry time and can be used when you have many similar components within a system. Similar rules apply to gates, although using paste special on a gate allows you to choose which inputs you wish to rename on paste. Fault Tree Plus offers a library facility that allows you to create your own repository of information, such as frequently used basic events or failure models. Any Fault Tree project can be opened as a library. This is useful if you have a common bill of materials that is shared amongst several different systems. When starting a new Fault Tree project, you can simply drag and drop data from a connected library into your project. Also, if the data in your library changes or is updated, you can easily apply that change to the corresponding items in your project. Let's take a look at some of the results produced by Fault Tree Plus. For this, I'll use an already completed example project. When the analysis is complete, Fault Tree Plus will display probability information under the basic events in certain gates. To view more detailed results, we can go to the Results Summary dialog. Here we can view probabilistic results for our top gate, such as unavailability and failure frequency. Unavailability refers to the probability that the system is not operating at the end of the lifetime, given that it was operating at the start. In certain applications, such as safety system analysis, this value is referred to as PFD, or Probability of Failure on Demand. We also have an option to view the minimal cut sets, which are all the combinations of basic event occurrences that can produce the top event. The Trace Cut Set feature allows us to see how the failures of the individual basic events combine to propagate up the tree. Lastly, we can view the importance results, which tell us which events contribute most significantly to the top gate's unavailability. Fault Tree Plus has a number of reports and graphs that allow you to print out results or export them into another program. Let's take a look. The diagram report allows you to print the fault tree. It will be broken into pages based on which gates are marked as page gates. There are graph reports that will display, for instance, a list of events that are the biggest contributors to unavailability, or give a profile of the system unavailability over time. We can also view text reports which show, for example, the probabilistic results for the system, or a list of the cut sets. All of these reports are completely customizable and can be exported to another application, such as Microsoft Word or Excel, using the Edit menu. I hope this gives you an idea of some of Fault Tree Plus's basic capabilities. Thanks for watching.